The last two years have been the wettest two years on record in Australia. Um, so that sort of just indicates how much rainfall we've actually had. And 2012 has started off again a very wet year. So it's looking like you know we could very well have three years of uh, very high rainfall in, in a row. Um, that comes off the back for uh, uh, the Murray Darling Basin at least of 10 years of exceptionally dry conditions. So conditions that were well below the average over the, the full part of that decade. Um, if you go longer, back further, you get obviously lots of variation in terms of um, wet and dry. But the last 12 years in particular have been very unusual in that we've had you know, perhaps the longest period of dry and then uh, you know, the, the record wet of the last it's an two years. period yeah. of wet, yeah. yeah. So what are the implications for agriculture arising from that small snapshot in time? Mm. Look, I think for farmers, you know, they've got very good conditions at the moment. Uh, I think it's obvious that mud's better than dust and uh, they've obviously got very good uh, production off the back of that. Um, we've got record wheat production that's just come off the latest winter crop um, and that's off the back of um, record wheat production the previous year, in, uh, which was driven largely by the eastern states. And so, you know, I think the, uh, the message for farmers there is that obviously uh, wet conditions are far better than dry, but also, more importantly and more seriously, that they need to build into their farm plans variability in rainfall conditions in the future. That you know, It's not going to be one year wet, one year dry, that there could very well be periods of uh, long periods of dry and uh, long periods of wet, and they need to be building that into their farm plans and, uh, and planning financially as to how they might manage those varying periods over time. And there are things that farmers can do, both in a production sense but also in a financial sense. So in a production sense, uh, during the, the big dry of last decade, we saw a lot of farmers moving to uh, techniques which actually help preserve moisture in the soil, such as minimum tillage and that sort of thing. During wet periods, obviously they need to think about um, perhaps alternate ways of managing, uh, you know, uh, floods and, uh, and other big wet periods. But, um, but certainly during dry periods, farmers had a lot of experience in terms of adapting some of their farm practices to those those weather conditions. I think uh, equally importantly, though, that farmers need to look at their financial situation as well. They can't rely that you know in any particular year they're going to get the income they might like to get on average. That it will either be higher or lower depending on the actual conditions in that year. And so farmers need to be managing their finances, you know, over a probably a three to five year period, even longer, and thinking about that there will be periods where their income will be better than normal and they should be making sure that they put some aside obviously for the future and that there will be periods where it's, it's not so good. And there are some policies that can help like farm management deposits which provide an opportunity for them to put money away when they have high, high incomes. Um, but farmers need to probably think about other things as well in terms of their investments and uh, uh, how they invest both on farm as well as off farm during the good times. What is your view about uh, the dire warnings that are around about uh, the lack of food security for the future, for a future in which you'll have 8 billion people uh, to feed on this earth? Yeah, well actually the forecasts are for you know, up to 9 billion by the middle of this century. So. Um, uh, we've got about 7 billion people now, so it's about a, obviously a 2 billion uh, increase over that period of time. But importantly, uh, it's not just the population increase that will mean uh, there'll be a greater food demand, it's also in a lot of developing countries there's um, a rising middle class and they tend to consume more food per, per person than what um, uh, obviously less developed countries do. And so it's a combination of the higher income of those middle classes in developing countries as well as a rising uh, population which is going to drive that uh, increase in food consumption that we're forecasting which um, we, we say will be about a 77% increase over the next little while. Now we also uh, believe that that sort of increase is achievable. Um, it sounds like a lot um, but uh, if you look back over history and particularly say over the last 40 year period Farmers around the world have actually increased food production by 165% over that period. And so the 77% they have to make in the next 40 years is really only about half the increase they actually made over the last 40 years. But in some senses, there's certainly the, the potential for farmers to be able to meet that demand, but it's not without its challenges. Um, 
clearly there needs to be a continued investment in R&D. We need to get that productivity growth and the way we get that is through R&D and also through investment. So the combination of R&D and investment and continuing that into the future in our agricultural um, uh, uh, areas uh, will be very important. Um, also important will be um, uh, the need for, for um, uh, that productivity growth uh, in, in the future. Uh, we've seen in Australia very good productivity growth and that has been happening around the world. But productivity growth has slowed a bit in Australia over, over the last little while and that's off the back of obviously poor climate conditions over the last decade but uh, also some decline in investment in R&D. So we really do need to encourage uh, continued strong investment. In Australia there's been a move away from, uh, from livestock, uh, from sheep in particular, uh, and into cropping over time. So whereas the average crop in the, in the 80s might have been you know, more like 15 or 16 million tonnes, you know, an average crop these days for wheat is um, you know, in, the, in the 20s, in the you know, 20, 22 to 25, and then the last couple of years with the very good seasonal conditions, we've had wheat crops of 28 and 29 million tonnes. So, um, we've seen quite a change over time away from livestock into, into cropping. Um, but the way the price relativities look like they might be moving in the next little while and also demand trends which will probably favour meat compared to cereals, we might see uh, very much a move back towards uh, the livestock sector, particularly towards sheep and beef in the, in the next few years.